Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice homemade functional equation. We have f of x squared minus x minus 3 equals x to the 4th power minus 7x and we're going to be finding f of 0. But not only that, I'm also going to talk about some other things. But let's go ahead and solve this problem in at least two different ways. First method. For the first method, since I'm being asked f of 0, it makes sense if I set this whole thing equal to 0. Why not, right? So let's go ahead and start by setting the input equal to 0, and then find the x value and go from there. How do you solve this equation? This is a quadratic equation, therefore we could use the quadratic formula, right? x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, plus 12, that will be 13, divided by 2. And notice that this gives you two solutions, right? 1 plus root 13 over 2, and 1 minus root 13 over 2. I'm going to use one of these x values. Do I have to use both? I don't think so. Uh, they both should give you the same answer if this question is properly constructed. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Since I know that this x value is going to make the left-hand side 0, I mean the, what's inside the parentheses, I'm just going to plug it in on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and do it. Replace x with 1 plus root 13 over 2 and evaluate x to the fourth minus 7x. That's the problem, right? How do you do that? Easy. You just raise it to the fourth power, right? But there's another way to do it. Let's go ahead and square both sides and find x squared first. x squared is going to be 1 plus 13 plus 2 root 13 over 4, which is 14 plus 2 root 13. But things can be divided by 2 and we'll get this for x squared. That is the value of x squared numerically. And if we use the other root, you would get the same thing with a minus sign in the middle. Right? So, no major difference. Now, to find x to the fourth power, I want to take x squared, this one. And by the way, x squared is not that one. It is 7 plus root 13 over 2. And then square both sides again. Because that's going to give me x to the fourth power. Right? So, x to the fourth power from here is going to be 49 plus 13 plus 14 root 13 divided by 4. This is going to be 62. If you cut things in half, you're going to get 31 plus 7 root 13 divided by 2. And that will be x to the fourth power, right? Now, I do need two things, x to the fourth and x. Let's go ahead and plug those in. I do need to evaluate x to the fourth minus 7x, right? And now, x to the fourth is 31 plus 7 root 13 over 2 minus 7 times x, which is 1 plus root 13 over 2, right? So I got the x value and then I raised, squared it, and then I squared it again to get the fourth power. Now I am subbing. Okay, let's go ahead and make a common, no, we don't need to because we already have 1. Let's go ahead and distribute the negative 7. Notice that the expression the second expression is going to be negated, minus 7, minus 7, root 13, all over 2. This is x to the fourth minus 7x, which is what I'm trying to get at. Notice that 7 minus, I mean, 7 root 13 and minus 7 root 13 cancel out. 31 minus 7 is 24, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. Therefore, this expression is equal to 12. So what does that mean from a functional equation perspective or from a function's perspective? It just means the following. We were given this equation and we were trying to find f of 0. We set f of 0 equal to the, uh, we set this equal to 0. And from here we found an x value and then we plugged it in here and we found 12. So 12 is the answer. In other words, f of 0 equals 12. Now, we'll talk about another question after we do the second method. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Okay? This second method, warning, 
is not always going to work, but this problem was specifically designed so that this method would work, okay? All right, so here's how it works. Again, I'm going to set this equal to zero. So my goal is to find an X value or some type of expression that I could use on the right hand side. But you don't have to use or you don't have to find a numerical value for X because you could get to X to the fourth without finding X. Let's see how. First of all, isolate the highest power, which is X squared. This is your formula, okay? And we're, go we're going to get X to the fourth power from here by squaring both sides, of course. When you do, you're going to get X to the fourth equals X squared plus 6X plus 9. Again, this is part of the formula. We do have, we don't have anything for X, do we? Right? But here's what we're going to do. We did replace X squared with X plus 3 and we got this. But notice that X squared pops up again. So we have to keep doing it until we kill all the X squares. Right? Replace X squared with X plus 3 again. Our goal is to basically get rid of anything besides X and constants. And now, we're, in other words, we're linearizing this expression. 7X plus 12. You'll be surprised how helpful this is going to be. Take a good look, because if you subtract 7x from both sides, you're going to notice something significant and amazing and magnificent, right? Okay, great. So you get x to the fourth minus 7x equals 12. If, in other words, if x squared is equal to x plus 3, then x to the fourth minus 7x will be 12. But our expression already had this, therefore... If this is 0, which means x squared is x plus 3, then this x to the 4th minus 7x will be 12. Therefore, that will be the answer, right? Because we were looking for that. Okay, now let's talk about something else. Here is what I wanted to talk about. Now, we were given an equation like this, and obviously x equals f of 0 is not the only question we could ask here. What about finding f of x? Could we find f of x? Here's one approach, and I'm going to leave it with you so that you can kind of test it out, okay? So you can test it, uh, set this equal to t, and then try to solve for x or x squared, whatever you want to do, and then try to get something that you can use on the right-hand side so that from here, you can get f of t, f of t should give you some value, and then hopefully you can go to f of 0 from there by replacing t with 0. But is that possible? That's going to be something to think about. And I'm going to leave that with you. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.